I'm here with this wonderful people to talk about how to get into UX games. Um, and here we have Celia Roden, recognized leader in application UX and cognitive science in the gaming industry. Celia holds a PhD in psychology and has over 10 years of experience in game development, UX strategy, and processing video game studios. Through work on Ubisoft, LucasArts, and director of UX at Epic Games, the famous Fortnite, she has contributed to many projects across multiple fl platforms, uh, PC, consoles, mobile, mobile, and VR. Cid is also founder of Game UX Summit. Amazing. You guys should check this out. <laughs> <laughs> Advisor for the GDC uh, UX Summit. Uh, member of the Foresight Committee as CNIL, National Commission of Informat Informatics and Liberty, an independent French uh, administrative uh, regulatory body. That's a lot, Celia. I know, you can just see the eyes. It's fine. This is just me. Hi, everyone. Oh, wow. <laughs> I wrote books, so it's, it's okay. Google Celia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tons of things that she already did for this industry, plus books, publish it. Uh, we can talk more about it. Nah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> our next here is Filipe Kumaru. Is an experienced designer, uh, experiencing mobile applications and games, focusing on visual, visual design, information architecture, and UX. Currently is working at Cloudhead Games as UX UI designer and awarding uh, award winning Pistol Whip game um, that's for VR. It's an incredible game. Check it out too. Previously, he worked in several games and VR platforms, mobile platforms, and Black River, game studio of Samsung RD Institute. Welcome, Philippe. Thanks, Vivian, for the invitation. I'm really glad to be here with you all. Awesome. Uh, Rich, uh, Rich Ridley here with us is a seasoned user researcher with emphasis on entertainment and video technology. Uh, Rich is experienced in broad uh, swatch of methods of applying them on a dig deep, deep into user uh, thought and behavior. He found a UXR program at EA and is currently leading the game's user uh, research at, uh, effort at Oculus. Welcome, Rich. What a profile. Hi, everybody. <laughs> awesome. Oliver, Oliver Donald from UK, spent the four years here in Canada, three of them. Uh, he's been lucky enough to work in the games uh, with this team at RUM HR. He partnered primarily with, but not limited to, creative industries and such as games, VFX, animation to elevate in talented teams, build world-class candidate experience, and mature recruitment and AGR frameworks. Oh. Hi, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and me, I'm a broad designer uh, with a little bit of 10 years of experience in products, web and mobile, um, but uh, about four to five years already exclusive to UX and apps uh, for games. So currently I'm working at Kabam uh, as a UX designer for Marvel Contest of Champions. Um, and I previously worked at Minecraft for a PlayStation platform. Hello. So we're here to talk about requested topic, which is how to get into game UX. How you do that? I hope that this panel kind of like brings up to the light, to light uh, what you guys uh, have been questing most. Uh, we recently did a uh, poll and to see what you guys have as a question. Uh, so I hope we we're able to answer all of them. So we have actually selected a few to, to talk about it. Uh, we're gonna cover as much as we can. So to start, let's talk about portfolio. What do hiring managers, managers look in a portfolio and how we can make ourselves stand out? Can, Who wants to I start? can kick it off if Before you want. Uh, <laughs> uh, from the conversations that I've had with hiring managers um, and not being myself one specifically in UI UX, but um, I think there's a couple of key elements overall for everyone to consider, which not everyone does. Um, and this is going to sound really basic to begin with, but I would say keep it simple <laughs> and show a very clear um, thought process from start to finish of whatever application that you are presenting um, with, you know, wireframes, uh, prototypes all the way through. Uh, we want to see clear documentation um, well written out, but not over elaborate. Um, and then when it comes to, I think that's just a very basic portfolio representation. But then when it, we're talking about going into games specifically, um, the things that I think that make um, 
make portfolios stand out. Um, and a bit of advice, I suppose, before doing this is to take a look at the job description that you are applying to. Um, and hopefully with it being well written, you should get an understanding of what are the kind of key elements of what this role is. You know, there may be, it might be some something a bit more specific to research at the beginning of the UX process, whatever that might be. Um, but those priorities should be there at the top. So kind of take a look at those and put those front and center of who you're applying to. Um, the second piece I'd probably say around going specific with portfolios um, and the teams that you are applying to is to shift the topography or the UI on your portfolio to kind of represent um, who you are applying to, like follow similar themes, um, follow similar color patterns, color schemes, um, design, um, kind of make it on brand. So it shows that you are kind of understanding um, how to build what they're building. Um, recently, actually, it's not necessarily UI UX, but it was art. Um, a candidate that I was speaking to um, didn't have this on his portfolio, but he we were working on a RuPaul game. So he drew RuPaul in the style of the studio um, and straight away the, you know, the hiring manager can see that he understands the style. Um, and so he's now happily employed with that team and it's, it's great. So I think that that's a really good point is just understanding and taking the initiative to work in that style. Um, and yeah, the, the other point I would say in terms of like really standing out and kind of going above and beyond Um if you, you haven't worked on a gaming project yet, show that you're you're into games. Um, you know, break down the user experience of a game that you play that either was great or not so great, and do it as kind of like a case study, so that you you are understanding the process from when you log into the game all the way through to what was great, what wasn't great, and maybe offer some kind of tips on what you would do differently or what you liked about it. That would be my somewhat quick and dirty tips <laughs> for portfolio. So anybody else has any thoughts about it? I would just add, so if, if it's for a UX designer position, um, I'll be careful to not just uh, focus on, on visual design because uh, UX design is it's not just that. It's oftentimes not that at all. Um, and make sure that you show the process that you, so if you have a case study, um, what's important for me when, when I, I hired a UX designer is to understand why you made certain decisions in terms of, you know, for the experience of the user. So who is your user? It's, it's nice to have at the beginning uh, a summary. Uh, this was the project. That was the objective. The, the users were such and such, um, you know, like maybe explaining uh, who the persona is and explain um, your process, you know, as, as concisely as possible so that we understand why you make certain decisions. Um, yes, it's nice to have something visually appealing, especially on your homepage, but ultimately what we care about is, is you know, how you got to um, certain um, decisions. And be careful also if you do case studies for games, if you're not in games, uh, it's a great idea, but be very careful because sometimes it sounds very arrogant. Um, I've seen, you know, like junior people say, oh yeah, this is, this is crap. And they, sometimes it is using, you know, this is not, it's, this is a terrible experience. So this is a not done well. Be careful with that sort of terms because you, don't know why um, the team ended up choosing certain things. Sometimes, you know, it's a sure. big constraint. They could not do something else. And sometimes it's a very conscious trade-off that they made um, for, you know, maybe a reason that you don't know about. So you can absolutely do that. I would actually recommend you doing that or just like uh, redo the HUD or redo the system of a game that you know as a case study. But just emphasize that you don't know uh, the constraints of the team, the, the specific challenges, and blah, 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 just to make sure that it doesn't sound uh, arrogant. Totally. Yeah. Um, and just, just to add to what you were saying there, Celia, in terms of like being able to tell a story with each piece of that, I think when you... The portfolio is the first point of entry, I suppose, for every candidate going through the... UI UX process, but then when you do start to interview, being able to talk about each individual project that you did work on and be able to talk about why you made decisions that you made, 
verbally as well and what you learned from those and um, yeah, key takeaways and stuff like that. So beyond the initial portfolio, going through the interview process as well, linking back to your portfolio. To me, I realized that when I was applying for the gaming industry, I was not ready. And when I received some tips in that after networking, I realized that I had to keep on, like to make my own branding, uh, to stand out because then I have a representation that is more accurate to what I am as a designer. Um, and exactly that, structuring uh, the process, uh, not forgetting about the why. Uh, if you have projects, if you don't have maybe uh, game jams, like help you out to figure out like how to work in a, in a gaming team and how the process would fit that to that team. Uh, but always putting some structure on it where like you included the why, you include your personas and your, uh, your focus. Um, and then uh, the whole, pro the UX process that you choose to do and why you choose to do that, how you think that attends to, to the project. For VR, Filippi, what do you have about the portfolio focus in VR? What do you see? Uh, I think uh, the basic structure uh, to organize a portfolio is considering the game uh, as a product case. Uh, it's important to mention the challenges, methods, and tools that was applied to solve challenges. And, and finally, the results. Um, a plus is instead the numbers uh, of the game after launch. However, all the that stuffs, all the stuffs that are presented needs to be simple and contextualized. All the hiring managers are flooded by links, PDFs, emails, LinkedIn submissions. So the portfolio needs to be clear and cohesive. Um, if you want to talk uh, specifically of, of each step, I consider a good approach is write articles and provide a link to see more info about it. Uh, but the selection, in my opinion, is a bit hazy, I guess. The knowledge today is at quite levels. Uh, hard skills, uh, I think, are no longer differential because they are already well resolved. There are many... Um, online courses uh, and information available. So in my opinion, uh, the soft skills are shining at this moment. Good communication to take uh, UX information to other areas, uh, education, uh, the team about UX, pra UX practices, ability to lead uh, a facilitation dynamic, internal workshops, stuff like that. Um, in my opinion, it is the differential today. Cool. And you're rich from the UX designers that yeah. you work with. Yeah, research is a little bit different. You don't really have a portfolio per se. Um, it's usually with most research positions, you're given some kind of activity to do to prove out how you think and the how, everyone mentioned the how, the why you got to where you were. That's really the important part. The exercise is just a way to understand how you think. Um, and if that isn't presented to you, then well, I was gonna echo what other people are saying, if you wanna get into games, but you've never been in it, you need to demonstrate that you understand games. Um, I see a lot of times researchers that have never worked in games and they don't play games either. And they want to get into games, which is curious to me. Like, why would you want to? <laughs> There's a lot of jobs out there that aren't games. Um, but if you are not, you want to get into games and you don't play them, I'd rethink it because that's a huge thing that you're going to have to get through. Is like we don't understand what we do, and user research is just a little bit different with games. So if you don't understand how that's applied or what the challenges are that designers are facing and games versus productivity software, um, it's going to start you off pretty pretty low. But if you do know games and you've known any experience, then doing a case study, like you were saying, even like running your roommate through just so you can have one, uh, you know, data point that that works well. I've seen people do that. They run like their husband or their wife through some game that they just want to, so they can articulate how they would do something or what it might look like in the future. And that can be really effective and be fun kind of anecdotes too during the, the process. Awesome. Let's move off to let's move to another another question here about portfolio still. Uh, as a plan or average UX designer, what sort of projects do I need to look into adding to my portfolio transitioning to game UX design? 
I consider it was um, my situation before starting game industry. My first thought was, uh, despite uh, entertainment industry, the game per se still remains a product. So present a solid product vision could be a good approach. However, um, an app or website basically needs to solve a problem. A game is more emotional, introspective, and abstract experience. So uh, it might be inter interesting to put some personal projects or studies, for example, a, a usability evaluation, uh, keep in mind the particularities of a game or study to improve the interaction uh, of an interface of a consolidated game, or even try to develop some personal project focusing on experience, whatever. What it means, it's important to show some repertory in games. For example, when I decided to move for game industry in 2014, I started this journey in a university in a specialization course in game development. So the plan was grab knowledge, doing network and put some efforts in most of my class projects to use it as portfolio. Fortunately, it worked for me. In short, uh, it's important to demonstrate your passion, knowledge of games, uh, no matter how, it's my point of view. Um, I, I think it depends. I think, I think it can depend on what studio you're applying to and what type of product they're uh, making. Um, I feel like mobile versus web, applications are somewhat different um, and have a different user experience. So I, I would, if you're applying to a mobile studio, maybe have some mobile examples. Um, that, that'd be just something that I'd add, just mm -hmm. diversity in portfolio again. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. And again, I would uh, try to add some uh, uh, small exercises, like uh, something about the HUD, how we, you would, redo stuff or um, your process if you had to, I don't know, create a crafting system in a game. Um, you have to understand the, the different uh, genres of game and the different platforms and what are different challenges depending on the genre and the platform. So if you can have a little bit of everything uh, or at least the, the most successful games currently, uh, that can be helpful and definitely have some mobile examples. Uh, even if you don't target a mobile uh, um, game studio, because oftentimes it's it's something that comes up, uh, or don't have a mobile version or a companion app. It's it's um, it's always good to have some mobile examples here. So, um, but definitely you need some if you target a mobile studio. Uh, so that you can tackle different areas too, but applying the same concepts is just the way that you do it uh, to that specific platform. Um, Let's move to qualifications. Uh, what are, are there any qualifications or certifications that would help me stand out? I, I can throw something out there. Um, I, um, I think the generic, you know, design degrees and, um, are great, but I think that something that I find that stands out is, um, kind of three month intensive boot camps or something like that, just purely because it, you're already getting used to the real rapid pace that can be in the gaming industry and working under pressure. Um, and so I think that it gives you, like if you can get through one of those and um, come out with some amazing pieces of learnings and obviously some great additions to your portfolio, I think that um, that can stand out to me. Um, um, and I do like, a, I, th I, I think it's interesting um, having a design background with a psychology background as well, like understanding user behavior and stuff like that. Um, they'd be kind of two pieces that I find particularly interesting. I totally believe that having a game design degree, it helped me out to focus and uh, line out a little bit better and uh, working with UIUX uh, for games. Because since the, in the team, you need to, to handle different areas, to make your feature happen or to make that feature happen. You need to work with a multidisciplinary team and having this knowledge uh, of working with different aspects in the game, level design, game designers, uh, live ops, like, et cetera. You do need to know how to 
have those conversations and uh, understand the reasons behind. Um, and totally helped uh, having a game design degree for me. How was your game design degree experience, Vivian? Um, my game design degree was four years uh, graduation. Um, it was back in Brazil and try it to align exactly uh, to different platforms. So every six months I would deliver a full game from business plan to, to the final product in a box with the graphic design in the box uh, for different platforms. So I did, I did mobile, I did, uh, Unity was the way to go, especially because the market in Brazil is heavily uh, Unity uh, based because we do a lot of mobile games. Now Unreal is very strong, at least like going over this change over the years, I see here that Unreal is stronger in some point. Uh, but we did for all platforms and it was interesting to have the, like the fine tuning for each one of them, uh, and having the, this knowledge of the process and how a business plan, a pitch will work until the, the final product. So it's a really good, uh, it really, uh, talks exactly aligns with what the market is, uh, requiring. And I really appreciate the, having done uh, the college and like the knowledge that I have nowadays. Yeah, I, I was trying to add something earlier, but I was muted. <laughs> um, so for, for UX, I would expect some knowledge of HCI, more specifically human computer interaction, um, just because we need, you need to explain why you choose certain things and you need you know, to, to explain how the human mind works. Um, so you don't necessarily have to have a, a degree in there, but you need to have an understanding in the vocabulary. Uh, so that I would expect uh, that at the very least on understand what is fits law, being able to explain it and that sort of things. And for research, I don't know what uh, Rich thinks, uh, but I would expect you to have done some research before <laughs> um, because you can easily bias the research. Uh, so I would expect people like will understand the limitation, like the human biases and, and how to conduct a research uh, properly uh, in, in a way that is not going to uh, introduce some biases. I had more specific yeah. knowledge I learned in workshops though. That I did, exactly. And I used to call ergonomy and it was in UX. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that in, in university, ergonomy. And uh, uh, it's good, it, it's good to, to hear Vivian's talk because I'm Brazilian and I understand that perspective. So in my point of view, uh, there are mainly free and, and paid courses available and we cannot forget the formal way to grab qualification through university in designing courses, philosophy, or science. However, uh, I consider uh, there are main good events to grab this kind of specific and fresh knowledge. Uh, GURX conference like we are did and Game UX Summit that I have opportunity to participate twice. The first one in Canada and the, and the other one in France, DevCon, Reboot, and GDC, of course. Uh, the knowledge with the, which the, the, the professionals bring to these uh, events is worth a lot. And besides yeah. awesome talks, some of these uh, events has master classes with great professionals in the Game UX Summit of 2017, I was in a really impressive masterclass with Dave Lightbaum. And I remember Celia was leading another one at the same time. So I consider this event a good way to grab some qualification. It's my, it's my point of view. It doesn't replace the practice though, but it's a good way to start. Yeah, for, for research, yeah, as Celia said, yeah, some kind of background in HCI is something that um, is pretty basic to come into. But the cool thing about research, and I think most professionals agree, that um, research people, good researchers come from all different backgrounds. So there's people that are, you know, had a history degree. I mean, you're going to have some kind of college degree generally, um, you know, so history degree. Or I was a creative writer. You know, that was my undergrad. And then I went to grad school for a little while. Um, didn't even graduate grad school because it started getting work. And I was like, well, that's why I went to grad school. So, um, and then, you know, 20 years later, I'm where I'm at. And so I learned a lot from grad school and continuing to read and educate myself. 
but then experience is really everything. So when I hire researchers um, and games and outside of games, I, the experience and doing research, if you have some kind of bad, some kind of background is worth more to me than like a PhD and you have zero experience. I'd rather hire somebody that has a history background or whatever it is, but has done research for five years um, and has some basic understanding. So I think it's just getting out there and doing things. You know, that's so when I look at like you were like, I think the original question like certificates or whatever things can kind of give you an edge. Um, if you want to get into it, any kind of experience at all is really what I look for. If there's internships, I would have told my past self to do a lot of that. So if you're just starting out, just get any kind of internships, get any kind of real world knowledge. And that's invaluable. Depends always how you use your knowledge towards the product that you want to create, like how you can pick up that information and uh, convert to a way that it serves uh, to your purpose. Uh, and I think that's pretty much how, how you stand out in an overall situation, like how you, you provide a unique perspective. Like being Brazilian, having different background. I did psychology too, but I didn't finish the college, but <laughs> it helped uh, align it with game design. But this is my individual experience. It might not be the same for everyone. And yeah. therefore, like there's workshops, there's network. That, that's, there is bugging everyone on Twitter, if you can, uh, to get some uh, resources. You know? Like it's just to be persistent and applying that knowledge that you have in the background towards a purpose. I think it's... A, Good way to put. Let's move to skills. Since we were talking, I think it's a good segue. Um, can I move to UX after joining like a company? As an example, I'm in QA, I'm going to move to UX. So what the resources are recommended to someone making the industry transition inside of the same industry? So that's a very interesting point because a lot of people get into QA as a door for the gaming industry it happens a lot <laughs> and how we can apply this knowledge to, to ux yeah so i actually did um work uh with some people in qa and uh, uh to see if they wanted to transition it's it's absolutely possible uh i would recommend you to find a mentor uh to help you out into um so you already have a lot of practice and you understand uh the game industry so that's great uh so now it's more about understanding the the theories uh behind ux so again hci or if it's research you know what's important when you do uh research um why it's it's uh uh, harder for QA testers to uh find problems in the ux ux because you know the game too well so that, that's the sort of thing. So find a mentor that can uh, accompany you. And uh, there's a lot of uh, online courses that can help you uh, have a better understanding of, of the theories behind UX. Um, there are a few books uh, as well. Um, so that, that can help. Out. Yeah, I second everything she said. Yes, for sure. As well. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you really want to break through, I've worked with people from QA that are just not going to be good at research for whatever reason, and some that are brilliant. And I know, I mean, I think we all know people that started in QA are executive producers and creative directors now, right? So it's a great place to springboard. But research specifically is kind of, you have to have that base understanding of bias and empathy and a lot of the theories that are out there. And finding a mentor is a great way to do it. And really, I mean, when I started, I was in market research at EA because they didn't have a user research org, like at all. They didn't even, it wasn't even a thing they thought about. Um, and so I kind of had two jobs. I was trying to do user research while I was doing that to kind of get a foot up and learn and kind of do things. So I'd imagine that'd be kind of what it is. You're doing your QA job. And if I worked there, I'd say, yeah, you can help. And I'd teach you some things and you can run some usability tests or something. But you'd have to do that on top of the work you already have. But, you know, yeah. it pays off because over time you could get hired to do that. Awesome. I see yeah. a few friends in, inside of a few studios uh, having the same experience, want to move to a different career. And what they usually go for it, or even recommended by their own studio, is starting to have a conversation with the producer responsible for, the, uh, for that IP and ask if he can participate on, on those rounds of discussions, meetings um, that is happening uh, with the, not only to UX, but to the field that you want to move from QA or whatever transition you want to make. Uh, but be more part of the day-to-day -day, uh, duties and even 
trying to get more, um, try to get some feature or something to work on and help someone uh, on the feature. It kind of teaches a lot. Oh. Second part of skills. Do UX design skills transferable? <laughs> they absolutely are. <laughs> it's just uh, completely like uh, most UX designers that I hired in my career are from outside the game industry. We don't have enough UX designers in the game industry. That's true. Um, so it's it's the same. It's the same principles. It's just uh, games are the main difference. It's not a tool. Um, so it's not just uh, usability, and it's not just about accomplishing goals. Uh, so you have to adjust it's to that. Emotions. But uh, yeah, also. emotions, engagement, all these uh, like all these things. things. But it's absolutely <laughs> transferable. And the fun. Don't forget the fun. <laughs> I, yeah. No, I don't like fun measurements. <laughs> Yes, I, I agree with Celia. If you understand uh, the game as experience, uh, for example, th this topic reminded me some colleagues. Uh, I have the opportunity to work with researchers from anthropology and sociology with, with an extremely uh, proficiency in research and human being understanding. Um, the same way, I have also worked with colleagues coming from computer science, for example, with a good background um, of technical and product requirements, testers with a, a good experience with documentations and use cases covering. So in the sense, the most important thing, uh, I guess, is have a, a proper mindset. But uh, I noticed uh, some convergence points uh, in, in, in all of these examples, like empathy, presentation skills, and, and public speaking, uh, ability, ability to make sense the data and transfer to the rest of the team or other areas, synthesis, ability to, to create opportunities and, and insights uh, from data and yes, finally, another point is the ability to offer the solution. I mean, understand the, the, the culture of company and the UX maturity and the resources that you have to work with. It's my point of view. It's funny, talking about data, it's something that I realized comparing those markets, like not, not game UX, but uh, web and e-commerce and comparing to gaming, data has to be interpreted really well because we're dealing with emotions and people and it's a very tricky thing to do. So working with researchers helped a lot because we can't kind of like have this uh, alignment with uh, what exactly that means instead of just picking up the data crude as it is and just working with. It's a very dangerous thing to do <laughs> without actually translating that to the perspective, what it was the occasion, and being very, very careful to work with data. <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, let's move to game industry is a very specific one. And I think it's a segue to what we we're already talking about, mainstream UX versus game UX. I think we kind of answered before. Uh, both are very, uh, they kind of drink from the same, uh, the same fount, <laughs> but uh, I don't know if it's, I'm saying this correctly, <laughs> but they kind of like navigate the same, the same space dealing with people and the heuristics are the same, the, the, the rules, uh, HCI, HCI rules are the same, um, but the game UX added up uh, the fine-tuning with dealing with game design and working on features and how you, you're going to tailor that experience to, to a game, making fun and promoting the flow and etc. cetera. Um, but what do you guys think? I, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there, all those things you said are right. <laughs> yeah, but I think the thing, I think we keep saying these, the same kind of thing over and over, which is, it, you really need to understand games, you know, like all of your skills will transfer, but you have to understand where, where, what games are and how they transfer and what the differences are we're looking for. But I mean, yeah, all your skills will transfer. You just yeah. have to know how you're going to make them work and the questions will be a little bit different. Um, but, you know, like for instance, you know, when I worked at YouTube, 
I never looked at how hard something was, like the challenge of something. And it was like, oh, it's not challenging enough. Like no one ever said that, right? <laughs> but in games, you say that all the time. Like, oh, it's not challenging okay. enough. People aren't having fun. Let's make it harder. You know, like, so <laughs> there's little things like that. But if you don't yeah. play games, you know, it's not going to make sense. And it's not just playing for, it is playing for fun, but also having uh, a, a tuning how to criticize uh, that game and how to, to have the takeaways from that game. Uh, not as a user only, as a player, a user only, but also uh, as, as a professional view of that game. Yeah, no, not opinions, analysis. Exactly. <laughs> the ideas guy, don't be that. <laughs> uh, the next question for gaming industry, and we're about to finish. Uh, what is the essential arguments for how to persuade people to invest in UX when speaking to organizations <laughs> with a low level of UX maturity? I think all of us been there. <laughs> yeah. Even Oliver, not working such with teams. <laughs> <laughs> It's hard. <laughs> it's freaking hard. <laughs> but how to explain that to them? Like our eyes, like how do yeah. you propose that to a company? Well, I'm working on building a second user research department now, doing it at Oculus. And basically it's the same thing I did. It is the, the same yes, thing I did. Don't yeah. stop, please don't stop. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it, I kind of have this philosophy um, about doing it. And it's, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Big Night. It's this movie that was in like the, I don't know, around 2000, Stanley Tucci and Tony Shalhoub uh, and, and Ian Holm. And it's about these Italian uh, brothers in New York in the 50s. And they're trying to create this restaurant, but they want to serve people, Americans. They want to serve Americans like authentic Italian food, but Americans aren't ready for that yet. And Ian Holm is this other Italian guy, but it's a very successful Italian restaurant, but it's more of a mix, right? And so they ask him, how is he so successful? And he says, well, because... Uh, first, you have to give people what they want, and then you can give them what you want. And that's kind of like what my kind of modus operandi about how I set these up and how I work within an org that is immature or doesn't see the value in user research um, is starting with what they want. And what they want is uh, usability, right? That's what they want. They don't understand the breadth that can be offered from user research. Um, so they want usability first. They're probably called a focus test. Like, who cares? Um, but they're gonna. that's what they want. And when you, they start to see that they don't have to give you a lot to get a lot back, the value that they're going to get, the impact that it's going to have on their game, um, and just walking through the process, making them a partner, because they might be exposed to you, like market research, um, which only comes towards the end, and it's more of a focus group. It's really not going to change. It's not going to be that helpful for them. Um, so once you start doing that and showing along, you're giving them what they want, and they see the impact. They want to have more. They want to have more of it. And you start to give them more of what you want, that we, what you know that they should be asking for, too, which is things in the very beginning, uh, longitudinals, um, a basic understanding of heuristics across the board, all kinds of stuff that you can offer them. And they start to go, oh, wow, this is great. And before long, they can't live without it. Um, and then part of that is... Um, it's just one person to start. It's always just me. And then they say, we have to have this. How can we get more? Well, I need more people. And then the organization just kind of grows from there. And with the organization and the trust that you build, um, it becomes part of the culture. It takes a long time. That's, but it's give them what they want. And then you can give them what you want to, for them to put forth the effort to do it for the value That's they get. It's, it's just something that like, oh, well, this should definitely be part of our process. Why wasn't it before? Right. So <laughs> That's Building right. trust is like something where you're uh, saying, Rich, is really, really important. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they don't know they did. They don't know for, for us, you know, we're like, yeah, we should have a UX process or UX culture. Let's go for it. People are like, come on, what are you doing over there? <laughs> uh, but they don't know any of that. So the, the idea is, is to really build that up and start with a, uh, you know, a, a quick wins. And, and so then more people are going to be excited about that. And, and then you can start to grow. Uh, just like in games, you know, you start you start to to show, uh, you tease them, and then a lot of people are going to get excited, and then say, "Yeah, but now we need more resources. We need to hire more UX designers. We need to have a bigger lab and have more researchers." And this is how you can get there. Um, but it's it takes a long time. If you look at the UX maturity scale uh, that are out there, um, it, it takes years. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, uh, I I agree with Rich and uh, Celia. The late and competitiveness, uh, the industry is billing numbers and the expressed numbers of game is released year after year. Um, 
this directly impacts the number of players, retention, strategies, decision, engagement, and um, above all, revenue. And the industry impressive numbers are a reflection of how competitive uh, and challenging this industry is, uh, both for AAAs and, and indie studios. In other words, UX aims to, to minimize these uncertainties to launch a, a competitive product. It could, it could be a, a, a good point to start a pitch for management team of your company. By the way, I suggest watch a talk of Celia and Heather in GDC 2016. It offered me a good point of view how to do that and it probably it could help you to yeah i agree with everything I, I i my my simple argument for user experience would just be if it's the experience as a player how long are you going to stick around for um and investing and building that trust as a ux designer with the team uh, and forging that alliance as they say is uh is is so important so yeah I, that would be my basic argument <laughs> crappy experience no players <laughs> And we didn't even start to talk about accessibility in games, but that helps. <laughs> kind of, it's part of the conversation. Um, the last question that I have here, one more about the gaming industry that is very, very um, like important that is happening all the time. What are the challenges that are happening in the gaming industry right now? Uh, and how maybe navigate those challenges? Uh, so, so if, if you're from a marginalized uh, community, you have more challenges than if you're not. <laughs> so I, you probably don't want to get there. <laughs> and I'm just, I'm just saying. So if you're from a marginalized community, find uh, mentors. Uh, you have a lot of uh, uh, people that can help out, who want to help out. There's a lot of communities. Uh, so go find them. Um, you, you can find there's some resources on my website, but also on ethicalgames.org um, to help uh, with diversity because we're bad right now at this. Uh, so just be be aware of that. Uh, but find mentors; they are out there. Yes, I 100% agree with that. Like uh, I remember Oliver, I bugged you like in the beginning. Your recruiter, you just approached me for a UX a Y role. And I remember not having, not being there and asking for feedback and bugging you until I have the feedback. I think persistency is something that, uh, yeah. that we need to have. <laughs> it helps. <laughs> but I think, yeah, we, we built a report really quickly, which was great. Yes. Uh, and I think that's, that's harder for minority and being uh, new to a new country. I had to restart. It was something that ha uh, happened, but somehow things that happened in my life, it helped me to build this knowledge and be able to, but never, never like avoided to be doing networking, to be bugging people on online, to find people to talk and how this happens here, um, North America. And then if you're in Europe, in Europe, like uh, whatever place you are, uh, kind of get to know the gist of the industry, the culture, try to get in uh, those circles. Uh, it, it helps minority too, because then you're going to be visible um, because it is a challenge. <laughs> it is a challenge. You think it's getting better? I think there is. A I mean, we're we're starting from so far behind that yes, it's getting better, but come on, <laughs> it's just slow. Uh, yeah, there's some initiatives that are trying to catch up, uh, making uh, people getting uh, into the gaming industry, or at least offering workshops focused on or uh, providing highlights for those uh, professionals. Uh, but it's still like far away from, from a good standard point because inside of the industry, this inside of the companies, this needs to change. And you do see a few like diversity and inclusion um, departments uh, starting, but I don't think it's enough because there's still bias. There's still a lot of things to, to overcome. That is in the end is harder if you don't have sometimes if you don't have a referral, uh, if you don't do the networking, if you don't know those circles, it's it gets complicated. Yeah, it's it's a small industry. Uh, it's big. Also that. 
big but small. Yeah. So it is, there's a lot of, you have to get into the circles, that's for sure. Networking is going to be really important. Um, and it's a fast, fast paced industry. It can be exhausting. So that, that's, that would be, I would say, the, the main uh, challenges. So not, not good diversity, um, small circles. You have to find your way in and fast paced. Yeah, another challenge is also that like there's a lot of uh, uh, people working uh, over time and that's just a practice and we kind of like, oh, we do because we love and you end up trapped it on that kind of thought and not a good behavior, not a good mental health act initiative from your part, but you kind of like you need to, you, you feel pressure to go and just do it. So... It's a cultural thing, I realized. I didn't have that before and uh, seeing here how the industry works, but I'm lucky enough to be part of companies that never did this to us, so I'm okay. But I see close enough uh, here at home, someone else working <laughs> over time and it's just like insane. It's like 12 hours a day. Uh, it is a lot uh, and I don't quite I don't quite know how to pinpoint if it's just a culture issue or if it's just bad planning. <laughs> Being completely honest. Um, Mostly yeah. bad planning over school. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Viv, can I, can I add two more uh, yeah. challenges on this? Uh, Go for it. The, the first one that I, that I noticed is the gap between the scientific knowledge and the industry production and how to how to translate this knowledge in a simple way to developers how to how can i say how to uh, minimize this gap between theory and practice uh, and the second challenge that i noticed is the how to reconcile the the requirements of of a game with the expectations, aspirations, motivations, and and behavior of players and stakeholders who may or may not be influenced by the, the, the trends and chains that are happening and, and do it in a considerable time to face off other simultaneous launch. Yeah, it's tough, I guess. <laughs> so it's my point of view. That's why, like, people don't stay that long in the industry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. Um, I don't have a magical answer for uh, I wish to know how to fix things because, but doing that, those initiatives, like calling out people to be part of the industry, I think it's a good uh, point of start. If you're interested, if you love that, if you really see yourself doing that for life, uh, People with different backgrounds perform better and diversity is a requirement even to change the smaller things or the old outdated practices. I think we need to start to, mm -hmm. to push for those changes, but together. It starts small, like, like Rich did. Yeah. <laughs> and also I, I've found in my career, it was really nice to leave and come back again. Um, so, like I would, just because you want to be in games, if you're there for a while and you're starting to burn out, just, you can come back. There's no reason you can't. And actually you might probably come back stronger. You know, if you go somewhere else and work on whatever it might be, learn from different people outside of the discipline, come back to games again, you're going to bring in, uh, perspectives that maybe that they haven't thought about before because you got out. Um, so you can kind of do that. Also gives you a little bit of, uh, <clears throat> perspective about a lot of things, <laughs> about the industry, about working hours, about pay. <laughs> so oh. going from EA to Google was very, uh, quite eye-opening. Uh, I think uh, that's it for our panel. Um, I just, thank you, sorry, everyone. Vivian, I just wanted oh, to, to add, yes. uh, I wrote a, um, a blog post last year to oh. uh, give some tips for people to get into the game industry, especially for UX roles. So if you want, I mean, it's a big a blog post and there's a, a lot of stuff that's already be, been said here but if you want to take a look at it it's on my website yes. so celiahooded.com and you'll see it's on my blog it's one of the most recent posts yes let's do this uh get in contact with celia too on twitter right celia uh rich what's your twitter handle rich ridland yes look for my rich name. <laughs>
<laughs> Find him. You're very funny on Twitter. Uh, Felipe, what is your Twitter handle? Felipe Kumaru. Easy. <laughs> It's my Twitter. It's name. Good usability. I like that. <laughs> Oliver, uh, you're not on Twitter, you're on LinkedIn, so search for his name. You're gonna find him. I'm I'm Hortense, underline Hortense on Twitter, so feel free to to look for us uh, and ask questions after this panel. Uh, and I hope that we could bring to light some very good uh, answers for those questions. I hope you guys made it in the end. <laughs> yeah, good luck. Come on in. We need more people. <laughs> yes. That's right. Agreed. That's right. <laughs> awesome. Thanks. All right, thank you. Thank Bye. you. Thank you, everyone. All this is possible thanks to our sponsors, Playtest Cloud, Play Your Research, Balsamic, Adobe, the book How to Be a Games User Researcher, UX is Fine, Antidote, and Sketch.